Hey guys, today we're talking about the top five urban self-defense myths that could get you killed or maybe land you in prison. You might want to take notes. Stay tuned. You know, there are a ton of self-defense myths with some really terrible advice. We narrowed it down to the top five list. Let's get right to it. Myth number one, it's safer to carry your pistol in condition two with an empty chamber. Well, it might make you feel safer carrying with an empty chamber. When it hits the fan though, the odds are definitely against your ability to draw chamber around and effectively aim and shoot your pistol fast and accurately enough to stop the threat of deadly force before your DRT. Dead right there. This myth is often discussed in regards to people who choose to carry Glocks like me. After all, they don't have external safeties and are therefore unsafe, right? Wrong. They have multiple internal safeties. And by the way, don't be over-reliant on safety mechanisms. You should still be practicing those four cardinal rules of gun safety, regardless of the safety features of your gun. And if so, you should never have an acc accidental discharge or negligent discharge or unsafe handling situation. If you feel unsafe carrying your pistol in condition one with a round in the chamber, you need more training. All right, guys, myth number two, you should be candy striping your ammo so you'll have various types of rounds in there for maximum damage in different scenarios. This is the practice of loading a gun with alternating loads, such as a full metal jacket followed by a hollow point, full metal jacket, hollow point, or in the case of shotguns, uh, field load, buckshot, slugs, etc. Now, the problem with this myth is that it creates a scenario where you might have some rounds that might over penetrate and different rounds have different recoil impulse and that is gonna affect your follow-up shots and your accuracy as well. And not every rifle, pistol, and shotgun round is gonna have the same trajectory, even if it's the same caliber or the same shotgun gauge. You might have unpredictable random results, so stick with self-defense ammo that's consistent and train with it. Myth number three, you only need to train with your firearm at really close ranges. Now, first off, unless you're a legit psychic, no one can predict or control the distance at which you are forced to defend your life. Here, by the way, are some statistics from the FBI's LEOCA files. LEOCA stands for Law Enforcement Officers Killed and Assaulted. Check this out. Now, according to these numbers from a report spanning five years from 2015 to 2019, 44% of shootings took place at very close ranges, between zero and five feet. 21% were between six and 10 feet. 15% between 11 and 20 feet. 8% between 21 and 50. And 12% occurred from over 50 feet away. There's really no guarantee that you'll be the victim of a close range attack. And if you train only for that one possibility, you may have difficulty surviving that scenario. Myth number four, knockdown power. I'm gonna carry a 45 ACP because it's got knockdown power. Well, we've all seen those movie scenes where people are swept off their feet after being shot, sometimes even thrown up into the air. But the truth of the matter is, this is largely a myth and it rarely ever happens unless there are additional, and I'm gonna say very unlikely circumstances. We should instead be thinking about the term stopping power. Stopping power is the, uh, basically the ability to incapacitate or immobilize an attacker. It may result in fatality, especially in the case of firearms, but there are a lot of other factors other than just bullet size. Stopping power isn't necessarily caused by the size of the bullet, but by the wounding effects of the bullet, which are typically our rapid blood loss, uh, causing circulatory failure, leading to impaired motor function and or unconsciousness, if not immediate death. Stopping power has a lot to do with how the energy, uh, how the flow of the energy of the bullet causes tissue and organ damage and how it affects the nervous system with hydrostatic shock and energy transfer. This will always be a highly debated topic, but there have been technological advances that make some nine millimeter self-defense ammo on par with the big bore calibers. Hey, I heard something out here. I think I'll just fire two shots with my shotgun. Bang, bang. Yep, myth number five. Definitely the most absurd of my top five list. In the words of Joe Biden, President of the United States, if you have a problem at your home, just go outside, fire two blasts with your shotgun. Not only is this unsafe, it could also land you felony charges. And from a safety perspective, this is an extraordinarily bad idea. 
projectiles from the shotgun, whether it's birdshot, slugs, or buckshot that are fired at the ground, for instance, can ricochet. They can strike unintended targets. And as far as firing in the air, those projectiles eventually have to land somewhere and can potentially be fatal. Not only that, but if this is a double barrel shotgun like the president owns, you put yourself into a reloading situation. You're out of ammo all of a sudden and potentially made yourself a target for the bad guy. I could go on and on with this one, guys. Just don't do it. Don't ever fire warning shots, regardless of the firearm you're using. Terrible suggestion. We would never, never, ever recommend it. All right, guys, please add your list of urban survival myths in the comments and make sure you subscribe, like, and share, and hit that notification bell so you know when we drop new videos. Take care, stay safe out there, and uh, here's a little something for your enjoyment. I have two shotguns on my home. They're locked in a safe. There's a metal gun case. We live in an area that's wooded, somewhat secluded. And I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony and fire two blasts outside the house. Buy shotgun. Buy shotgun. You don't need machine gun. You don't need 30 rounds. Buy shotgun. Buy double-barrel shotgun.